Greg Hepley! Everyone's favorite teenage delinquent slash sociopath. Whoa. How could you even say that? <laughs> you serious? No, really. Don't let his innocent face fool you. He's a crazed maniac. <laughs> Broke his hand. The potting monster doesn't like it when you look at him. Ah! But wait, have you ever stopped to think how this little pipsqueak's life would play out in the real world? Busted. Well, today, old buddy, old pal, you're gonna find out. Yeah! Ah! Three days, no shower, smell. Now, if you don't mind me, I need to get into character. <clears throat> oh, that's more like it. Okay, now, it brings me great pleasure to present Diary of a Wimpy Kid 25 Years Later. The year 2032. Friday. Well, I haven't written in this thing in years. I was getting home from work today and I saw this thing lying under a stack of paperwork. I guess I used to like writing in it when I was a kid. So, I figured I'd give it another try. Oh, Jesus, there's a lot of catching up to do. Where to start? Rowley's gone. N not dead or anything. He just moved away. He's lived in Boston for seven years now. I, I think. I don't even remember anymore. Damn, I haven't spoken to him at all since he left. I still don't really want to talk about it. I, I work a good job. I, I guess. Me and Bryce Anderson work at this office downtown. I mean, it's not like I enjoy it, but it pays the bills. Am I happy? I'm not sure. Sunday. Roderick still lives in Plainville, like me, but not Manny. He decided he was too good for us and went to New York in his 20s. The rest of the family still hasn't forgiven him. Me and Roderick will still see him if he's in town, but not mom or dad. Speaking of which, they're still living in the same house. Yeah, it's pretty old now, but they seem to be good there. Roderick's married now. He met this woman about eight years ago, and they've got a kid. I don't know if I'm jealous or what, but Roderick seems to be the one who knows what he's doing. Tuesday. <clears throat> yeah, so Roderick's married. Me? I've never really thought about settling down. It's not like I don't get around, I do, but I've never actually had a serious relationship. Currently, I'm not seeing anyone. I, I guess I could say I've been busy with my job or something, but I'd just be making excuses. Work keeps me occupied but it hasn't really been something I need to bring home. Plus, Bryce and I never really made it past being colleagues, so we don't do anything outside the office. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Get to the hospital, now. It's dead. The cancer's gotten worse. Shit. Wednesday. I guess I have to come clean. Dad was diagnosed with lung cancer over a year ago. He started his treatment almost as soon as he found out. A couple months back, the doctors told us that the cancer went into remission, and we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Then, during a checkup, they found another tumor. So I guess the doctors here are just bullshit. Mom hasn't really been taking it well, which I guess is totally fair. For now, their savings are just covering the medical bills, but that won't last forever. Thursday. You're never going to believe who just showed up at the hospital. That piece of shit, Manny. After almost a decade, this is when he decides to see Dad? <sighs> Damn it! Roderick must have told him. I wish he told me instead of just letting him walk in unannounced. He's in the hospital lobby with me and Roderick right now. And Mom's with Dad. Neither of them know Manny's here yet. Manny wants to go see them now. So I guess we have to let him. Uh, 
Hey, Mom. Dad. Get the <coughs> fuck out of here right now. It didn't take Manny long to leave after that. He tried to talk to us on the way out, but Roderick took care of that. Now that you saw who you left behind, you can leave. Don't make me ask twice. Roderick, try to understand. I don't want to hear it. Leave before I break you. I'm home right now, trying to think all this through. For the first time in a long while, I'm genuinely scared. Not just for Dad, but for myself. <laughs> this is never what I thought my life would be like when I was a kid. Why couldn't I have that life? Is there something wrong with me? I, I need someone I can talk to about it. I don't think Mom and Dad have ever truly understood me, so not them. Roderick, maybe? But... I'm not going to lie, him and his perfect life kind of intimidate me. Sure as hell not Manny. There's only one person I can think of who I'd want to talk to right now. Dear Rowley, Friday. Alright, before I say what happened next, there's something I've needed to get off my chest for a long time, so here it goes. Seven years earlier, Rowley and I were best friends. We had spent pretty much every day together since middle school. We went to college together and even moved into the same neighborhood afterwards. I was applying for a job at Fun Brain Games, the company that made Twisted Wizard. Rally had actually managed to get Zooey Mama in the local paper. He got good pay, and from what I remember, he was doing a really good job. I was probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. But it only took one phone call for... Everything had changed forever. So, Rowley got a call from this comic syndicate in Boston. They had seen his work and they wanted to offer him a position. The thing was, they only had room for one more cartoonist, so if Rowley wanted the job, he'd have to move to Boston within two weeks. Now, I wasn't in a particularly good mood already, because Fun Brain Games had just denied my application. So when Rowley gave me the news that he'd be moving to Boston in two weeks, I was devastated. The day before he moved, I told him to meet me on the roof of our old middle school, for old time's sake. I had something I'd been waiting a long time to tell him that I needed to say before he was gone. I love you. Yeah, I love you too, man. No, I'm serious. I don't know if I'm bi or what, but... I love you. He left the next morning. We haven't talked since. Thursday. It's been one week since I tried to get in contact with Rowley. He still hasn't responded. At this point, I've only got one option left. I'm not gay, Greg. <laughs> Saturday. My father is dead. He's gone. I'll never see him again. I'll never be able to talk to him again. I'll never be able to tell him what I thought of him. What I really thought of him. This was the man who made me hide my sexuality for the last three decades. He's the reason I'm miserable. I remember when I was 16, I tried to tell him the truth. He didn't take it well. No son of mine is gay! You got that?! Yuki okay, Yuki! Okay. Please just stop hating me! He never talked to me about it again. I guess he figured I'd changed my mind. I should have gotten this off my chest when I had the chance. I should have told him when I could. I don't think I'll go to the funeral. Roderick told me it'll be on Monday. I haven't even been in Plainville. I've been living in my car in Boston for the past two days. 
I guess this means I'll have to write down what I thought of him instead of actually saying it. Just like every other genuine emotion I've ever had. <laughs> Fuck you, Dad. Wednesday. The funeral was two days ago. I didn't go. I ended up driving back to Plainville yesterday because... There's really nothing left for me in Boston. I found a termination letter from the office in my mailbox, which I guess I should have expected when I wasn't at work for a week. I realized I needed to have some sort of closure with Dad, so I decided to visit his grave last night. I guess I wasn't the only one with that idea, though. When I arrived at the cemetery, I detected the smell of gasoline. It suddenly made sense when I saw Manny standing at Dad's grave with a lit match. <laughs> I hope you burn in hell, you piece of shit! I should have murdered you myself when I had the chance! I don't know what I wanted to do there last night, but it sure as hell wasn't that. I feel sick. Thursday. I couldn't deal with this by myself anymore. I needed someone to help me. It was only a matter of time before I became Manny. And after what I saw what he was capable of at the graveyard, I couldn't let that happen. I wasn't about to let this hate dominate my life anymore. I was scared of what Mom and Roderick would think of me after skipping the funeral. And I was pretty raw after what happened with Raleigh. So it took a lot of nerve. And even more alcohol. To do what I did next. I feel... I'm not sure what I feel. What Bryce and I did this night isn't something I've ever done with another man. Like I said before, I've never been able to move on from Rally, but I think I just did. I think I'm happy. It's been so long, I don't even remember what that feels like. Friday. I guess you could say my day didn't start too well. And Bryce, about my job- Is that what this was about? Jesus Christ, Greg, I can't do this to people. Get out! The worst part is, he wasn't even wrong. I've done this my whole life. I've manipulated and lied into getting my way. <laughs> I guess I am no better than Manny or Dad. I figured I'd cut my losses and go home, but I guess I can't even do that. Because all I found when I arrived was a locked door and an eviction notice. I should probably explain this a bit better. I never had much money saved to begin with, but when Dad got cancer, I ended up chipping in on his medical bills, and my paycheck just barely covered the rent. As soon as I got fired, there wasn't enough cash left. I'm still not ready to see Mom or Roderick, so... I guess I'll have to take my chances on the streets. Friday. I'm not sure how to say this, but... I spent the night at the Plainville Homeless Shelter. That's not even the craziest part. Fregley was there. I guess I let my guard down because I ended up talking to him and even telling him what I've been going through. Look, Greg, my dad wasn't around a lot. I don't know if you knew that, but when he was, he was pretty bad. He hit me. He hit my mom. Eventually, sometime during elementary school, mom told him to leave. Even though he was a total piece of shit, I still missed him. It wasn't easy without him. Mom barely had enough income to support me. You probably remember how I coped. Never quite acting normal. He took quite the mental toll, and I don't think I ever recovered. It's not like we could afford therapy. I know we weren't really friends, 
And I don't blame you for that. I've always had my mom, though. She's the best friend I've ever had. I don't want to tell you what to do, man, but I really think the best thing you can do is see your mom. At the end of the day, family's family. Damn. Who would have thought the best advice I've ever been given would be from Fregley? Saturday. Well, after what Fregley said, I decided it was time to see Mom. I wasn't sure how I felt when I knocked on the door of my childhood home. But the moment the door opened, I broke. Neither of us said a word. For what seemed like a lifetime, we stood there motionless. Then it all spilled out. All of our pain took the form of a million teardrops streaming down our faces. We talked for ages in the old living room about Dad, Roderick, and even Manny. He agreed it would be best if I stayed there until I got my shit together. Once I thought Mom went to bed, I remembered something about the old house. Way back in middle school, I hid my Mima's diamond wedding ring here in case I ever needed to pawn it to get myself out of some god-awful situation. Like the true asshole I am, I thought now might be that situation. Greg, what have you done? Like a broken record. That's all she could say. At first in a hushed voice, repeating it at increasing volumes. Greg, what have you done? 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 Until finally, one last time, she fell to her knees and screamed. Greg! What have you done? I wasn't sure what to do. I, c I couldn't say anything. I dropped the ring and ran, not sure where to go. <laughs> After an hour of what I thought was aimless running, I realized where I was. Roderick's front lawn. It took me one look through the window, seeing Roderick with his wife and kid, to realize... I can't do this. I thought I could, but I can't. What would I even say to him? What could he even do? All I can do is screw everything up. And he doesn't need that in his life. Nobody does. I'm done with all this. I'll just have to sleep in the alley. Sunday. First of all, let me get something straight. This is no longer a journal. It's a suicide note. I'm not emotionally equipped to keep living like this. I've ruined every relationship I've ever had. I've got nowhere left to go. I'm truly stuck in this world with a bunch of morons who don't love me. And that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Love. See, that's the thing. I I've got a lot of love to give. But I've never gotten any back. Maybe when I was a kid, but even then... I don't think my parents ever really loved me. It looks like I've lost everything I have to live for. So I guess this is... the end. Plainville man takes his life. Community left in shock. By Holly Hills, the Plainville citizen. Nobody expected such tragic news on the calm morning of October 2nd, but at approximately 3 p.m., longtime resident Gregory Hefley, 37, jumped off of a five-story building downtown in an attempt to end his own life. Paramedics rushed him to the nearest hospital, where he was put on life support. 
He spent the next four days in comatose before waking up one final time and uttering the name Rowley in a trance-like state. Afterwards, he fell back into a coma and was pronounced dead within an hour. Greg was actually good friends with world-renowned cartoonist Rowley Jefferson, who made a statement on his death. Greg was my good friend, probably my best friend, and I cannot describe how horrible this makes me feel. Greg and I had a very complex relationship that I don't think either of us properly understood, and my biggest regret is not exploring it more. Jefferson confirmed today's Zooey Mama will be a tribute to his friend. When Hefley's family was asked to interview on the subject, his brother Roderick commented, I only wish he would have talked to me about it, while his mother Susan was too distraught for words. Knock knock! Huh? Thermos! Excuse me? Thermos be some way to tickle your funny bone! Say what? Uh, Zooey Mama! Friday. Well, it's been a long time since I've written in this. I'm not sure where to start. And one year ago, I tried to kill myself. I survived, barely. I spent the past year in the hospital and lost the use of my legs. A local paper got lazy and declared me dead the second I flatlined. They weren't wrong, I guess. The old Greg Heffley is dead. I never realized what life was until I lost it. It doesn't matter what people think of me. My life is my own, and I need to take charge of it. I've spent a lot of time in recovery, so I chose to take advantage of it. I've started talking to therapists, trying to fix myself. They actually told me not to write in this anymore, but I needed one last entry. <sighs> Today, I leave the hospital. Today, I start my new life. Never again dwelling on my past. Today, I forge my new path into the future. Signed, Greg Hefley. Hey, you! Yeah, you. If you happen to enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe for more amazing videos. Okay, bye!